Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here, and I want to provide some quick feedback in regards to the Mac Mini M1. Now this is the the new Mac Mini with Apple Silicon. Uh, this is the Mac Mini M1. Uh, mine has 16 gigs of memory, which is the max memory, and it has a one terabyte SSD. I could have gone bigger with the SSD, but that's when it gets really expensive. And one terabyte's plenty good because I have my external. 14 terabyte hard drive connected for my video storage and you know a few things uh, as far as initial impressions are concerned in regards to the mac mini m1 i mean it to look at it, it looks just like the predecessor um <clears throat> you know as i mentioned earlier on the back it's got you know i've got my hdmi it's got two usb c's i wish it had more than that it's just got two so I've got my hard drive and then this little camera cable that I sync. And then it's got your traditional USBs and a network port. But what's what you need to be aware of, and this is kind of, uh, you know, to be expected day one. This thing, a lot of your apps are still going to be Intel. And it's going to use something called Rosetta. At the time of filming this, and this is launch day, November the 17th of 2020, Google Chrome that I downloaded, it's running in Rosetta. So the native uh, the native Chrome, allegedly it came out, but then I think it was, I don't know what's going on. But, you know, just be aware that some of your apps, at least in, you know, for a short period of time, may be using Rosetta to run. So it's, it's using that to run the old Intel apps. But Chrome's, I mean, this is the, the uh, uh, Rosetta version of Chrome, and it's running fine. But, you know, keep in mind some of your big apps, if you use, you know, whatever you may use. Now, like me, obviously Final Cut Pro 10 is already optimized out of the box, and Motion is. I mean, I'm using this for video editing for Irix Guy's Adventure Channel. YouTube.com forward slash Irix Guy, where you're watching this. So, for me, I've got what I need. Uh, but if you're a user who uses a lot of third-party apps, you know, you may want to wait a few days or a few weeks until you until you migrate to uh, to the Apple Silicon Mac. Look at that score, man. 1678 single core, 16 or 6693 multi-core. That's insane. And then I've got my old uh well, it's old now. It's the MacBook Pro 16 inch with a Core i9 and 32 gigs of memory. And sadly, the MacBook Air with M1 that I have coming is probably going to grossly trump the performance of this. But I'll be doing some comparison videos, not just with the 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro i9 and the Mac Mini M1, but I'll also be doing some comparison videos with the 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro i9 versus the... MacBook Air. The MacBook Air that I have coming is a is an eight core M1 with uh, uh, 16 gigs of memory. Curiously enough, 16 gigs of memory is the max memory option, at least currently for both the Mac Mac Mini and the and the uh, MacBook Air. And it's going to have a one terabyte SSD, just like my Mac Mini has. So going to be interesting to compare these two computers but also to compare the MacBook Air to this laptop, com also compare the MacBook Air to the, uh, to the uh, Mac Mini, which is also M1 processor based. This is really, Apple's really going to shake some things up, man. I mean, this is, I've edited a few videos already, and it's just so smooth. I mean, this is a, a Mac Mini historically is kind of an entry-level computer, and now it's smoking you know, the, the MacBook Pro i9, which is, I mean, it sounds ridiculous to say that, but I, you know, my assumption is, is that, that Apple just wanted to let Intel down gently. I mean, you know, if you're Intel and, and Apple says, Hey, I'm going to start making my own CPUs, you know, that's probably not good news for Intel because they're used to selling chips, uh, you know, selling the Intel CPUs to Apple. So Apple just kind of quietly downplayed the, the, uh, the performance of the M1, and the reality is that the M1 is just a beast. It is a beast, man. But like I said, you know, you know, if you use a lot of third-party apps, it's probably going to take just a little while 
for those third party developers to get their uh if they haven't already done it to get their apps updated for the Apple Silicon for the M1 and future Apple Silicon chips. But I, I couldn't be more excited. I mean, I've just gotten my paws around this. So, you know, just seeing that Geekbench benchmark and uh, and editing my first few videos on the Mac Mini just made me smile. I'm like, dude, this is this is an entry level rig. I mean, when it's not the most entry level, I mean, I upgraded the memory and the and the SSD, but this is still a somewhat entry level system. And the performance is like pro level, man. It's crazy. It is crazy. Tell me what you think within the comment section below. And stay tuned for tons more Apple Silicon videos here soon. I'm going to be reviewing the heck out of this. And ask any questions you may have. Because I've got, like I said, I've got the Intel Core i9 uh, MacBook Pro 16-inch. I've got the, uh, uh, the Mac Mini M1. And then I've got the MacBook Air M1 incoming. Y'all have a good day.